Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's Mel Herbert here for MRAP TV. We have got Amor Matu in the house yet again. This guy is a train who cannot be stopped in the education circles. So he's going to be talking about deformed T-wave. What deforms your T-wave? So you've got lots of different T-waves. We all know about them. But what about that T-wave that looks kind of normal, but then it's got a bump or a lump in it? What does it mean? Is there any clinical implications to that? Oh, yes, there is. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the EKG case for the week of May 27th, 2012. Let's jump right into the case. This is a 65-year-old man that presented to the emergency department looking pretty sick. He had complaints of cough and vomiting, and he looked pretty worn out. He's complaining of some fatigue and malaise as well. And anybody who's elderly presenting with malaise, we're always getting a quick 12-lead EKG because you never know what you're going to find. And by the way, at triage, it happened to be that he was tachycardic, so that's another good reason to check the 12 lead. And this is what we end up finding. He's got a regular, wide, complex tachycardia. Now, hopefully, anytime the words regular, wide, complex tachycardia come to mind, the first thing that pops into your head is ventricular tachycardia. Maybe the second and third and the fourth thing that hopefully pop into your head also our ventricular tachycardia. It's the most deadly rhythm that's regular and wide, but there is actually a differential that's worth thinking about when you see these type of rates. The rate here was about 145 to 150, and here's your differential. Of course, number one, two, and three, you've got to think about ventricular tachycardia. Superventricular tachycardia with aberrant conduction, which is just a generic term which includes bundle branch block, and WPW, and a few other things that give you a wide QRS complex. We just call that aberrant conduction. So SVT with aberrant conduction, you know, I put a question mark there because it's really not something that you should routinely think about. There are many, many cases, and maybe you've seen some or heard of some, cases of patients that were thought to have supraventricular tachycardia with the bundle branch block, treated with beta blockers and calcium channel blockers, and they ended up crashing and burning because it actually turned out to be ventricular tachycardia. So I put a question mark up there because you really ought to question yourself if you ever make a diagnosis of SVT with aberrant conduction. I'm not saying that you're not allowed to, but you really ought to question yourself. Think twice, think three times before you call something SVT with aberrant conduction. Atrial flutter with two to one conduction can produce a regular tachycardia. And if that A flutter has aberrant conduction, that'll give you a regular wide complex tachycardia. Let's go back and take a look at this 12 lead and ask ourselves, is there any evidence of atrial flutter? Do you see P wave or atrial activity flutter waves that are mapping out at a rate of about 300 beats per minute? And well, it kind of looks like maybe there's little sawtooth stuff going on down here, but if you map out those complexes, they do not map out to 300. They map out to a rate of about 140, 250. So that's too slow to be atrial flutter. And again, even if you map out some of the junk that you see down here, there's really nothing that maps out as an atrial activity at a rate of 140, 150 or so. So what I would say is that we can probably get rid of atrial flutter with two to one conduction and we're really doubting SVT with aberrant conduction also just as a general rule. So the things that we're thinking about is ventricular tachycardia and sinus tachycardia with aberrant conduction. What about sinus tachycardia? Well, you need to look carefully for sinus activity, P waves. And I'll tell you, the physicians taking care of this patient looked at the rhythm strip and they said, well, it's regular and it's wide complex. This must be ventricular tachycardia. The EKG machine called it ventricular tachycardia. But before you call it VTAC, you really should take just a moment and look for sinus activity. And when you look for sinus activity, you don't just look in that rhythm strip. Remember a few weeks ago, we talked about which lead is the best lead for picking up sinus waves or picking up atrial activity. The best lead is not lead two. The best lead for asking are there P waves or not is actually V1 probably simply because V1 sits right over, pretty much right on top of the sinus node. So you want to really scrutinize all of your leads, but pay special attention to lead V1. 
And when you look up here in lead V1, you notice something just a little bit unusual about the T waves. V2 T waves look pretty good, but if you look carefully in lead V1, you notice that there's this little blip right on the T wave that's causing a little deformation, if that's a true word or not, I don't know. But it's producing a little deformity of the T wave. And that blip, to use a technical term again, that blip, whenever you see a blip in the T wave, you've always got to be suspicious of the possibility that that is actually a P wave. And it turns out that those little blips are very, very regular in all of those beats. This is actually sinus tachycardia that was initially misdiagnosed as ventricular tachycardia. Now, if you're going to misdiagnose something too much, it's always better to overdiagnose VTAC than to underdiagnose VTAC. But again, just take a moment and look in all of your leads to make sure that you're not dealing with sinus tachycardia. Because as you know, the treatment is very different. Actually, if you look in all 12 of the leads, you actually notice that in AVR, you can actually see P waves. And in AVL, you can actually see P waves as well. That's kind of strange. AVR and AVL, two leads that nobody ever looks at except hopefully you, you know, those are two leads that are showing the P waves. And again, our money lead, lead V1, is showing the P waves as well. If you mistakenly use the lead that the computer is suggesting to use, lead two, you're going to miss the P waves. If you look at any of those other leads, I think you're going to miss the P waves. And that's why it's so important to look in all of the leads, especially lead V1, whenever you're trying to figure out if there are P waves. Now, that, that's one pearl. The other pearl I'm going to focus on is what I mentioned at the start, the T wave. Just a very, very simple pearl. Whenever you see a deformed looking P wave, or T wave, whenever you see a deformed looking T wave, or T wave that just doesn't look right, always consider the possibility of a buried P wave. All right, so let me give you another case where we learned this the hard way. This wasn't my case, fortunately, but this was a case from one of our community hospitals. There was a 65 year old woman that presented to the emergency department with dizziness and near syncopal episodes. Now she's in the emergency department. Her vitals are okay. She's doing pretty good. You get a 12 lead EKG. She's got a left bundle branch block. And it turns out that the left bundle was known to be old. She's got old EKGs with the left bundle. So this is not a new left bundle. So here's the 12 lead EKG. She's laying in the stretcher. She's just chilling. She's doing fine. And this EKG was read as sinus rhythm with maybe some PACs, right? There's a maybe a PAC right there, but there's a P, QRS, T, P, QRS, T, and so on. So this is read as just sinus rhythm. Well, she's near syncope. She's 65. We're going to admit her to the hospital. She gets admitted to telemetry just for a routine rule out. And the night of her admission, she ended up crashing. She went into third degree heart block. She nearly died. She had a very stormy course in the hospital, but very nearly died. And when they look back at the original EKG, they realized that they missed something serious. The computer missed it. The emergency physician missed it. The admitting physicians missed it. The formal cardiology read missed this as well. It wasn't, after, it wasn't until after the patient crashed that people looked back at this original EKG and they realized that there were terrible T's here that they ignored. Take a look at these T waves, right? There's something a little bit funny about these T waves. You'll notice that they're just a little bit, they're a little bit sharp. They're not tall, narrow-based, peaked T waves the way we normally see with hyperkalemia. They're relatively short T waves, but they're just a little bit pokey on top, right? They're just a, there's just a little bit of a poke to the top of them. And also, if you keep looking everywhere, you'll notice that, well, there's a T wave right there, which is kind of biphasic. Biphasic T wave, that's a deformed T wave. What does a deformed T wave make you think about? Maybe there's a buried P wave in there. Well, how do you know if there's a buried P wave? You need to use some calipers and you map it out. So here's my magic calipers, and I'm gonna map out that deformed T wave with the P wave and if it maps out, it means that there's a buried P wave in there. If it doesn't map out, it's just artifact. So let's move those calipers across the rhythm. And sure enough, those P waves map out with the abnormal looking T waves. That means that that poke, 
that means that that deformed T wave is actually being caused by a buried P wave. And what that means, folks, is that there's one, two P waves for every QRS complex. One, two P wave for every QRS complex. One, two P waves for every QRS complex. That means that this is a second degree block. A second degree block with two to one conduction. So this is a pretty sick patient. The patient's got fairly rapid P wave activity, so sinus tachycardia with the second degree AV block, and there's also a left bundle branch block you know what, this patient is going to need a pacemaker. This patient should not have been on telemetry. This patient should probably have been up in the unit getting ready to get a pacemaker. Somebody with syncope and a second degree AV block and a left bundle branch block, 65 years old, that patient's going to need a pacemaker. Not sit on telemetry for a soft rule out. Here's another case with an almost identical story. This was sent to me, um, and I don't recall who sent it, and they probably didn't want their name on this anyway, but this is a patient that was diagnosed in the emergency department with simply sinus rhythm, right? P Q R S T. P Q R S T. The patient presented after syncope. It was an older patient once again presenting after syncope. Well, the EKG looks pretty good. The EKG machine says it's sinus rhythm. The emergency physician, the admitting physician, the formal cardiology interpretation the next day all said sinus rhythm. No big deal. Patient gets admitted to telemetry and the night of the admission, the patient ended up having a really, really bad outcome, which I'll tell you about in just a second. And then they went back to the original EKG, and they thought, you know what? There's something abnormal about some of these T waves. Take a look. There's just a little deformity on that T wave. By the way, if you're looking at this using your iPhone, you're probably not going to notice this because you need a bigger screen to really notice this. But there's abnormal T waves in a handful of these leads, just a little bit of a deformity there on those on those T waves. So whenever you see deformed T waves, what does that mean? It's possibly a buried P wave. How do you know whether it's just artifact or a true P wave? You map it out. So let's get our calipers and map out the deformed T wave with the P waves. And sure enough, the P waves and the deformed looking T waves do map out. They're also just a little bit pokey once again um, that might be a soft call, but they're deformed. They're just a little bit pokey. you got to map them out, and sure enough, they map out. What that means is that there's a P wave. There is a P wave. There's a QRS complex. There is a P wave. There's a P wave. There's a QRS complex. What does that mean? You're looking at second degree AV block with two to one conduction. This was a secondary block that was missed. The patient went to telemetry. The patient had a cardiac arrest the night of admission and died. And then after the patient was pronounced dead the next day, this resulted in a QA process where they took another look at the 12 lead EKG and realized that everybody missed the second degree AV block. And the reason they missed the second degree block is because people ignore those T waves. When you see deformed looking T waves, consider the possibility that what you're looking at is actually a buried P wave, map it out. And if it maps out, you're looking at a buried P wave. And oftentimes those are second degree AV blocks that may get missed or maybe like in the first case, it's actually sinus tachycardia. Think about those P waves. Pay attention to the terrible T's. All right. I hope that case was helpful and I uh, hope you had a very, very nice week and I look forward to talking to you next week. Bye for now.